Good morning. Can you hear those birds? It is a nice 52 degrees out this morning. They're calling for a high of 72 today. Hoping we get in a phone call shortly saying the tire for the TYM tractor is repaired. Because it'd be nice to get that back together and working for the project we're doing today. If it's not, it's not the end of the world, but it'd be nice to have it. We need to get these piglets outside run area built today. We planned on doing that the other day, but... The tractor broke down or got a flat tire, so I kind of put a damper on that project because so I had to take care of that. So now we need to get these guys out. Azalea still isn't showing any signs of heat. So. All right, we got to move the meat birds. So far, they've been doing really good on pasture. They've been doing really good moving forward with the chicken tractors. We only have lost one so far. It was kind of a random bird we lost towards the beginning. It was a bigger bird, so I was surprised. Not sure what happened, but other than that, they're doing good. The meat birds are really loving being on pasture. It's nice to see them eating a lot of the grass, the clover. That means better meat for us. Guys patiently waiting for breakfast. You giving your pig some coffee? No, milk. Raw milk? Raw milk. You ready for your milk? You ready for your cereal? Brutus wants it. Yeah, you know, they always want to eat out of the same one. It's just how pigs work. They want what the other one has. We don't have names we settled on for these two feeder pigs, so let us know what you think. We like to name them after kind of food related. Um, but this one is Yukon and sweet potato. And then when they have babies, they can have tater tots. This is the area we had the pigs in last year. They did really good over here. I probably should have picked it up last year, but I didn't. We had a really wet fall. So I didn't feel like coming back over here, picking everything up. We need our pig panels. So that way we can build our pigs a temporary run out behind the barn for now. So we're gonna take this whole thing down. Probably put the gate over there too. And then we can have a little gate on the side to get in and out to them. So let's get this disassembled and then we can get the piglets outside and see what they think. So normally we put our piglets outside on pasture right away in the hog panels and then we train them to electric fence. The piglets this year, we have them in the barn. Two of them, Yukon and Sweet Potato, they're gonna be our breeder pigs in the future. And we wanna make sure they know us good and that they're good and friendly with us. We wanna make sure that they are good with Brutus and that Brutus is good with them. And they're Idaho pasture pigs. So they are on the smaller side when you get them. So it's nice to be able to have them inside for now. And then we'll put an outside run so they can go in and out. And then once they get bigger, they'll be outside on pasture all the time. A lot of you probably see that we're not using the porta coop right now, but we are going to be using it. We are going to put our layers, our new layers in here when they're ready. The other chickens love their coop up there. And so we're going to use this for our new layers and then they'll be in there. And we'll move them, move them around like we do the meat birds. Our egg laying flock right now have been free ranging. And it's been really nice because the areas that they've been free ranging in, we haven't had any ticks. Anytime we go outside of that perimeter, we usually get ticks on us, but wherever the egg layers are, we haven't gotten any. So I've been enjoying them just free ranging for that reason. I got some grass with it.
The pig sure can do a number on these panels. We've got quite a few of them that are bent up and bowed from the pigs running into them or pushing up to them and brushing themselves on them. Two are straight so far. I think that's a good straight one. That one's not too bad, but these two are pretty well. Got some good bows and dents in them. I can't get the toad out yet. I'm gonna need the tractor over here with the forks because that's got dirt inside and I can't budge it. And the tractor's not fixed yet. We were gonna start doing this project yesterday. We had the big flat tire on the tractor, so I wanted to have the tractor to pallet fork everything around to get that out of here. But since we still don't have it, we still have to get started on the project. So hopefully at some point today we get the phone call we can go pick up the tire. I don't know how many years we've had this stuff. I think we must have built these in like 2016 or 2017. And every year we just reuse them. All right, so normally we do an automatic feeder and let the pigs have free choice grain but with the Idaho pasture pigs, they don't need as much grain. They'll eat a lot more grass and hay. That's why they're called pasture pigs. So I don't know if I want to give them free choice grain. I'll have to keep an eye on them and see how they're doing. Because you can give them free choice grain, but I also want to make sure they eat a lot of pasture and grass and not just grain. Because we want them to get the omega-6 and the omega-3s in their meat. Right, and if you give them candy, they're just gonna go to that first. Right. I don't mind feeding them grain at all, but I don't want them just to pig out on grain. I want them to do both. Right. So I think we'll do what we're doing right now is feed them grain with milk on, when we want to. And then we'll have them on pasture and in the wintertime we'll give them hay and stuff also. Got it? Getting it. There we go. We could use some handles. 2.0, handles mm. on the sides. I think these are 16 feet long, but I need to double check. Just over 16 feet. So now we gotta go figure out our layout so we can put it and we have it so we can still open up our outside door all the way up against the barn. Well, let's flip it around. This door is 48 inches, so at least to this rib, this door is gonna come to a hit. If we go to there, I'll have you hold this tape measure right there. Twelve. Sixteen is two here. Okay, sixteen. Which will be roughly right here. So this is all just temporarily. We need to figure out what we want to do back here for winter housing. I'm thinking we're probably gonna end up pouring a slab and then we'll do another roof off the back and have another slant roof this way and probably go 10 feet to 12 feet wide. Then we can have a run in the winter time for the pigs when it's really cold and snowy. And then we'll also have a covered run for the chickens to have a winter off of their winter chicken coop. So this is just something we're setting up for now to get the pigs outside and to train them on electrical fence.
You better be careful, your pants fall off. They could. You never know. Be our gate. Now go this way and this way. I'll we'll put a T post here. Bam. to be too. That's a pain. I mean you must have put it there. Must have. You can hear it. It's right there. That's why I like pouring concrete slabs and anchoring stuff to the concrete because that way we don't gotta worry about rocks. Hopefully that's the only one. That'll do it. Come here. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen you have two tape measures out. No. Oh, I know what I need to cut this piece at. Got so it. I need to cut it at 12, just under 12 feet, 142 inches. And then we'll connect it to that T-post. No news on the tire yet? No news on the tire yet, nope. Bummer. We're gonna have to go a couple of, like an inch long. Other than that, we gotta go eight inches short. So we're gonna go long. Oh yeah, Brutus? So we're gonna go like so. So I should take that hump of gravel out right there. If you have a little trick for putting these little clips on, let me know. I always struggle with them. There's a tool. The tool that I got from Tractor Supply before that is for this broke the first, like within the first few times of using it. Wow. 
Well, let us know if you think that Brutus grew overnight. It seems like every time we see him, every couple days, he's grown a bunch. I wonder how big he's gonna get. He's trying to get the bugs. Yeah. Oh, it was in his mouth too. Uh. So if you're interested in getting any of these panels and you've never done it before, there is hog panel and cattle panel and is there, what else is there? There's <laughs> some for sheep and goats. I think they call those livestock panel. There's cattle panel, which are usually the cheaper ones. Back in the day, they used to be 20 bucks a panel. <laughs> and then these are hog panels. If you're doing pigs, you want hog panels because this very bottom spacing is small. If you get cattle panel, the bottom spacing is like this or bigger. Maybe this size and the piglets can go right through it. Ask me how I know. I was gonna say, trust us, we know. <laughs> so, just saying, you wanna do pig panel or hog panel, whatever they call it, and not do cattle panel if you have small piggies. So the first time we did it, the cattle panel was 1999. I don't remember if that was regular price or on sale. The cattle panel, which are like four feet high, the hog panels, which are shorter, I think they're like 30 or 32 inches high. We're like 39.99. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna save myself some money and just get cattle panel. Well, yeah, then we were chasing around baby piglets once we brought them home. <laughs> you need to come in here with me. Come on, come on, come inside with me. There you go. There you go. Yeah, Brutus, that wouldn't keep you in, would it? Not very long. <laughs> You like the pig pen? I think that should be a puppy pen. Ready to get the piglets outside for the first time? I'm ready. You I'm ready, Brutus? I'm thinking they've probably been outside before, just not here. I don't know how fast they'll come out, but I don't think it's gonna be too fast. Come on, piggies. Hey, piggy wiggies. I don't know, maybe they're gonna come out. Come on, Yukon. Come on, girls. What know. are you doing? I think one comes, they all come. <sighs> oh, Brutus the... scare you? Oh. Moving too fast for you? Don't mind him. You guys know Brutus. Yukon was pushing one of them out. What? Wow, that came out fast. Oh, the little one came out first. They're chewing on rocks. Oh, is that okay? What do you say, Yukon? Well, let's see what happens with Brutus. Brutus, they're in your dog kennel. Come 
Come over this way, there's grass. Sweet potato found another piece. Look at them. They love it. I don't know if you can hear them, but they're mowing down on that grass. That one just went over and pulled the weed out. I can't wait till we can get them out on pasture. Want to get them bigger, a little bit bigger, and get them trained good to electric fence. And then I want to get them up there and see how they do. They're supposed to be really good grazers. So far, I mean, it seems like it. Yeah, and watching them doing what they're doing so far really excites me. Look at that. So one of the characteristics of an Idaho pasture pig that you look for to make it so they really can't root and dig is you want their bottom lip to meet their snout and that makes it so they don't dig. All four of these have that characteristic. They're pretty noisy chewers. We've had pigs out on pasture, we've had pigs eating grass, but usually when they're eating grass, they're rooting it all up, like we'll put their nose under it and they eat the whole thing. They usually start at the roots, eat the roots, and then eat the grass. It is wild to see these guys grazing like a cow would and eating the grass. They are loving that, and that's why we got this breed, this is what we want. We want them to go around, eat the grass, eat the pasture, and just graze it so we can rotationally graze them around and then it's gonna make amazing, delicious, nutritious meat for eating. This is super encouraging. They have been super friendly. They eat everything so far that we've given them. So I do need to get electric fence out here to train them to electric fence, but I wanna get them used to this area, make sure that they're used to being out, and then we'll put the electric fence in as a perimeter so that they'll know like at that point, like this is where we can go to, but then once we put the electric fence up, they'll know like that, hey, we can't touch that because we gotta back up. So we'll let them get used to this for a couple of days and then we'll line it with some electric fence. Probably gonna do electric fence, two strands, and then I'll also put some poultry netting in here in its spot so that way they have been trained to both of them. So if we wanna use netting or just two strands of wire, that way they'll already know which each one is. Brutus, these are gonna be your guys to watch over. Not only are they gonna eat the grass and get all the nutrition from that so that we end up getting it in our meats and stuff, but it also helps keep care of our pastures and all the things. So it's just so many different things that they can do. It's really, it's really awesome. So we're just so excited to have this breed and we can't wait to see what, how they turn out. I'm just making a brine to do some fermented carrots. Okay, I'm gonna put my brine on my carrots. Perfect, put my top on. The ferment is all set. Now I'm just gonna let it sit here for a couple days, check it, a couple more days probably, check it. It could be seven to 10 days, it could be whenever. So just, I'm gonna keep checking it and see. And then once I get to where I like it, I'll go ahead and stick it in the refrigerator. It's encouraging to see how much the pigs like it outside and how much they like eating 
grass. I can't wait to see what they're like once we get them trained to the fence and get them out on the pasture. And we also want to get them in the woods this year and see how they do. One of the things we want to start doing is we want to start fermenting more foods and eating more ferments. And I can't wait to try the carrot ferment. If you guys have any recipes that you really like that are fermented foods, if they're like simple or if they're more in depth with a lot of ingredients, leave them down below. We really want to get into fermenting more foods and expand our palates. I've never grew up eating ferment, so it's something I really want to get into for gut health. So let me know what your favorite ferments are because I am looking for some good ones this year. So thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. Or if you're wondering, no, I never got the phone call about my tire being ready. Hopefully it'll be ready tomorrow because we need this TYM back up and running. It was my fault. I know I got the flat tire, but I need it back so we can get to work with it. So thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. We'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye.